Hello students, welcome back to Clary Concepts, Unleashing Conceptual Learning. Visit our website www.claryconcepts.com to get uh, to know about another lectures, another subject of uh, engineering wherein we are teaching the engineering concepts in the easiest way possible. All right. Today I will start the lecture with an experiment for you to perform, right? So let us say uh, you have a bottle in your hand which is filled with air. So the bottle is filled with air, the plastic bottle. On the other hand, you have a bottle filled with water, completely filled with water. Now, if I ask you that the, the, the seal of the bottle is such that it will never open. Okay. And you need to do the experiment wherein you need to crush the bottle. You need to crush the bottle from both the ends. Right. Now, first you do this experiment wherein you try to crush the bottle filled with air. And then you try to do the experiment with, wherein you try to crush the bottle filled with water. When I say crush, I mean that the bottle is such that the bottle will never, uh, you know, uh, break. Neither the seal will get open. So, crushing means you need to reduce the volume of water and reduce the volume of air. Now, which one do you feel is more easier task? The one with air or the one with water? Obviously, the one with air will get easily compressed, right? And the water will not get easily compressed. Now, the question is, how much now, if you say, let's say, for example, if I want to reduce the volume of air by 5%. So, whatever is the volume of this air in the bottle, if I want to reduce the volume of air by 5%, I'll put the extra pressure on this, right? Let's say the pressure, extra pressure is delta P. On the same side, if there is a superman with me and the superman is trying to reduce the volume of water again by 5%, but the same amount, 5%. But the pressure required here is, let's say, delta P2 and here is delta P1. Delta P2 is much, much always will always be much, much higher than case of delta P1. Now, question is, there is a property, there must be a property of the fluid which is, uh, you know, relating this delta P and the volume, yes. And this is the correct uh, pick that you need to have. There is a property which relates the change in the pressure required for a particular change in volume that you need to do for a particular fluid. So, the, the property is called compressibility and bulk modulus, right. So, let us first talk about the bulk modulus or bulk modulus of elasticity. So, bulk modulus or bulk modulus of elasticity is represented by a symbol called capital K. Let us say I have the fluid whose initial volume is V0 and I try to compress the fluid from all the six phases and I put the extra pressure called delta P. Because of this pressure delta P, the volume reduction happens. Let us say the volume is reduced by the quantity delta V, right. And now, if I find out that for a unit fractional change in volume, what is the extra pressure required, delta P, and this property is, I mean, this value is defined by a property called K. So, what is K? K is change in pressure, K is the ratio of change in pressure to the fractional change in volume of the fluid. That means K will be equal to what is change in pressure delta P, right? Now, I will put negative sign. I will say why negative sign is put over here. What is fractional change in volume? Percentage change in volume is delta V divided by V, where V is the original volume, right? V is the original volume. Now, see why I have put negative. Now, if you represent this in another way, you can say this K will be equal to minus del P by del V into V because denominator of denominator is going up, right? Now, why I have put minus? The reason behind this is when you calculate delta P, that means P2 minus P1. Higher pressure in case of second case, P2 is higher, P1 is smaller. So, uh, P2 minus P1 will have a positive value, delta P has positive value. Delta V, if you see, V2, which is a smaller volume, minus V1, which is a bigger volume, the delta V will be negative value. In order to compensate for this negative value, I will put negative. Because you don't want any property to have negative sign, because it, it gives a uh, wrong meaning to it, right? So, this negative sign is kept. So, as the overall value becomes positive and more the value of K represents more bulkier is the fluid. That means more difficult is the fluid to compress. See, why? Because for a unit change in volume, delta P requires the K. So, for water, delta P for 1% change will be much larger compared to 1% change of uh, volume in case of air, right? So, delta P required for air is much smaller. So, that means this overall value will be smaller for air. So, I can say that K for air is very, very small in comparison to K for water. That is 
bulk modulus of elasticity yes and if you talk about the units what is the unit of this see unit of pressure is pascal what is unit of volume meter cube and agar here is also meter cube so meter cube meter cube will get cancelled so just pascal is the unit of bulk modulus of elasticity clear higher the value of k higher the value of k more difficult more difficult is the fluid to compress isn't it let me give you an example let me tell you that if i have a beaker of water which is filled with 10 liter and i have a piston over here here is water filled now if you compress this volume and reduce this to let's say 9.9 .9 liter this water to 9.9 .9 liters do you know how much atmospheric pressure you require delta p requires 210 atmospheric pressure atm pressure what is 210 atmospheric pressure see the pressure that i am feeling right now is one atmospheric i need such 210 atmosphere pressure to reduce the volume of water by just one percentage you see so that's why water in many cases we are considering this to be the incompressible fluid why because in the operative pressure range the water volume is very very it is not changing at all in fact right so you can neglect this fractional change in volume so water is that's why called incompressible fluid so the fluids with larger value of k are considered to be the incompressible so most of the liquids you can consider to be incompressible fluid now let us talk about the compressibility or the coefficient of compressibility that is beta now by the word compressibility what do you mean compressibility so ability of a fluid to get compressed so this parameter b will define how easy the fluid is for compression so this is exactly reciprocal of the bulk modulus k simple so what is k k was defined as delta p divided by delta v by v and minus so you take this beta is minus of delta v by v denominator of denominator will go on numerator and delta p as it is so this is the formula for compressibility so you can say the the unit of this will be 1 over pascal or you can say pascal inverse right so what this indicates this indicates that more the beta i would say more the value of beta or let us write it higher the value of higher the value of beta you can say that higher the value of beta means compressibility is greater that means the fluid is easily compressible the fluid is easily compressible so which means if you talk about air and water so beta for air and beta for water which one do you think will be larger but obvious beta for air will be larger because air can easily be compressed clear so let us take several numericals to understand this more clearly determine the bulk modulus of elasticity of a liquid if the pressure of the liquid is increased from 17 newton per centimeter square to 100 newton per centimeter square okay so they have been given you the liquid and you are supposed to find out the bulk modulus of elasticity for the liquid that means you are supposed to find out k right and what they are saying the liquid is pressurized from pressure of 70 to 130 newton per centimeter square and the volume of liquid is decreased by 0.15 percentage that means delta v so let us suppose that for initial stage of liquid i have this volume let's say v1 and after compression the volume is reduced to v2 right and uh, the delta p is obviously given to you this is p1 over here let's say p1 was 70 newtons per centimeter square and p2 was 130 newtons per centimeter square now if i want to calculate k k meaning what it is minus of delta p divided by delta v into v because delta v by v we will go upside where this v will be what v is basically v1 that is initial volume right so let us now put the values delta p is p2 minus p1 delta p v is v1 upon what is delta v v2 minus v1 now see what is given to you the volume of the liquid is decreased by 0.15 percentage it means v2 over here can i say v2 minus v1 decrease in volume it is saying v2 minus v1 divided by v1 is equals to 0 0.15 per this 0 0.15 percentage so if i want uh, into 100 will be 0 0.15 right why because see let me 
give you the clear understanding about this. Okay, let us talk about another way. I will give you another way of understanding. So, volume is degraded by 0.15 percentage. It means what? V2 will be, I can say this is 99.85 percentage of V1. Yes. So, V2 will be equals to 0.9985 V1. Yes or no? Simply put this over here. So, what is, you can put uh, P1 and P2. Now, you see, uh, if I talk about the numbers, P2 is basically 130 Newton per centimeter square. I want to convert this into uh, Newton per meter square. I know that if I have P1, that is 70 Newton per centimeter square. If I want to convert this into meter square, I will do is Newton divided by what is centimeter? It is another one minus 2 meter and square of this. So, what will happen? 70 into, I mean, Newton upon 10 to the power minus 2 cos square over 10 to the power minus 4 into meter square as it is. But 10 to the power minus 4 will go on the numerator side, it will get 10 to the power plus 4. So, this minus 4 will become plus 4 Newton per meter square. So, I hope you are getting this. P1 is this. Similarly, P2 is what? 130 Newton per centimeter square, you multiply it by 10 to the power 4 to convert this into Newton per meter square. Simple. So, what is P2 minus? Now, you take what is P2 minus P1? So, minus of P2 is 130 into 10 raise to 4 minus P1 is 70 into 10 raise to 4. Now, what is V1? V1 is as it is. Keep V1 as it is. V1 divided by. What is V2 minus V1? V2 is 0.9985 V1 minus V1. You take V1 out and common. So, what you will get is, I will just put it over here. K is equals to minus, I will just see the equation. I will just calculate this part. So, 130 minus 70 will be around 60. So, I can put it like this, 60 into 10 raise to 4 V1 divided by I can take V1 common and out in the denominator, I will get 0 0.9985 minus 1. 0 0.9985 minus 1, I will get 0 0.0015 into V1, right? And this is negative of this, basically. So, V1 will get cancelled, negative, negative will get cancelled. Your K will be equals to 60 divided by 0 0.0015 into 10 to 4. So, this is 40. 1000 into 10 raised to 4 and unit will be Pascal, right? So, K is around 40 into 10 raised to 3 and 4, 7 Pascal. Answer. Clear? I hope you are getting this. Let me check the answer. Correct. The answer is correct, right? Alright, let us move ahead. Second numerical, what is the bulk modulus of elasticity of a liquid which is compressed in a cylinder from a volume of this? at this pressure to a volume of this at this pressure, right? Also determine the coefficient of compressibility of a given liquid. So, first we will try to define the, get the value of uh, uh, bulk modulus K and then we will talk about the pressure. So, first let us talk about pressure. What was volume V1? V1 is 0 0.0125 meter cube given data. Pressure P1 is 80 into, I mean, Newton per centimeter square. I will convert this into Newton per meter square. I know the factor 10 to the power 4. Newton per meter square. Volume 2, V2 will be 0 0.0124 meter cube. Pressure P2 is 150 Newton per centimeter square. I will directly write into meter, Newton per meter square, 10 to the power 4. So, these are the four values given to me. I have been asked to find out the K. First, I will find out K. What is K? K is minus delta P divided by delta V over, let us say, V1. So, this is minus of uh, P2 minus P1 into V1 over V2 minus V1. You take minus in one of this case, you will get uh, P2 minus P1 into V1 over V1 minus V2 because let's take minus over here. So, K will be what? P2 is what? 150 into 10 raise to 4 minus P1 is what? 80 into 10 raise to 4. What is V1? V1 is 0 0.0125 divided by what is v2 0 0.012 so again v1 minus v2 so v1 is 0 0.0125 minus 0 0.0124 yes now find out the answer of k k you will get is 
150 minus 80, 70 into 10 raised to 4 into 0 0.0125 divided by 0 0.0125 minus 0 0.0124. I will get it to be 8.75 into 10 raised to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 Pascals. Let me check the answer. Yeah, correct. Right? And now what is coefficient of compressibility? You will get beta is equals to 1 over k. Simply beta equals to 1 over 8.75 into 10 raised to 7. So what you will get? Let us check. 1 divided by answer. You will get 1.14 into 10 raised to minus 8. Pascal inverse is the unit, right? If you remember. This is answer number 2. So, I hope you got the answer and I hope you got the clarity on how to solve numericals based on compressibility and bulk modulus. Okay? Thank you so much. See you in the next class.